Well, I've changed from worm to small cube of luncheon meat and pretty well instantaneous on a roach. Oh, nice roach too. Oh, oh my word. How about that for roach? That's a nice one. And he has gobbled it down his tummy. But a change over to the luncheon meat, instantaneous. Of course, it remains to be seen whether it's going to continue in this way. And I've had one bang on the swim feeder. We shall try again. Barely a rod length out, that's all. And of course, that enables me to be accurate as well. Feed out. Right, so I'm here at uh, Royal Barks Fishery, which is just a regular day to get water. Just come trying to go through a few techniques, and uh, oh, as you see, I'm already set up, got a quiver tip rod out there uh, towards the island. Uh, with a pellet on that one and um, I've been trying with worm and lunch of meat on the inside. So, a few tips I want to give you just for, this is a day to get what you would call in foreign countries a pay and play I guess like a golf course and very often you can get some fish. Now I haven't seen anything caught as yet around the uh, lake but it is GP time, it's 20 past one so I've been about maybe an hour it might take a while for them to, uh, to find it. There's three lakes here, all pretty much the same size, different types of fish in them, but this lake, as well as carp, does have roach and some really nice perch in them. So the setup being, I'm going to start with, sort of balance out between two, between a float fishing close on the inside and uh, feeder fishing out towards the island. I've got a golf ball feeder on there, might get lucky, something might just hang itself. But uh, let me run through it and I'll show you what I'm using. Time of year, some people ask, this is late spring, certainly not summer, but we have had a hot spell, put a tinge of colour in the water, and it might, might have put the fish off a little bit, I don't know. Anyway, this is what I'm fishing with. So, five pound line straight through. A golf ball, homemade swim feeder. It's windy too as well today. A swivel, and then I've got some lighter line, which I'll tell you what strain it is. So it's five pound main line, this stuff is, uh, well, is that 4.9, but trust me, it's much finer. And then I've got a banded pellet there, so you can see you've got a banded pellet. Ground bait's a bit of a mix up of uh, different feeds there. Got a bit of Baileys in there, uh, some micro pellets. No real hook baits in there because there's enough feed going in there, I reckon. But because I've got pellet on the, I've got pellet on the hook. I'm just going to drop in one, two, three, four, five, go for six. Six of my hook bait, six of my hook bait pellets in there. And just going to cap it off with a bit of ground bait. And I'm going to bang it out where I've already put some, catapulted out some balls of ground bait out there. But listen, what I've done is make the balls of ground bait pretty much that size. So, if you started fishing, you could be casting out with a feeder for an hour to get, say, 10 or 20 balls out there, or you can fire a load of balls out, and this will then be the same size as the balls of ground boat I'm using. Let's get it out there. So being as it's pretty windy, I'm using here. That's upside down, an antenna float here. The shot's bolted to either side of the float. I've got the same 4.9 hook link, and I've just got one number four shot up against 
well, not up against, about 10 inches from my hook weight there, which is a cube of lunch for me. Now even while I've been talking, there's a little chew mark out there, so there are fish down there. And I'm fishing just in by this bush here. Run through a few tips on the bait for you. So, purely because there's some big perch in here, um, I thought I'd better bring some worms. I've just got ordinary garden worms. I just put some moss and some grass cuttings in there, a little bit of soil. I'll just get a couple of them out for you. Look, there you are. So, they're just regular earthworms, as you can see. But the main thing is, if you want to keep them damp, um, don't use tap water. I use a bit of rain water to just damp it, damp my hat and flick it in there just to keep those worms alive and fresh. And of course, make sure you keep your lid on them. But in warm weather like this, bright sunshine, keep them under your chair or in the shade. And don't be afraid also to be able to get a pair of scissors and cut them in half if you're getting bites and you're missing, and even on a small hook. The worm might be too big for them. Cut down a section of worm and try that. I might even do that in a minute, but it could be really good. Uh, lunch of meat, that's also good. Now here, I've got some frozen blocks of stuff here. I'm watching this float at the same time. So this must be two years old, it's been in the freezer, but it's perfectly good, perfectly usable for hook baits and for using small bits and pieces. All you do is this. This one's already cut into um, a strip, I suppose you call it. I'm just going to go for about about that size. So for this, I can get three, four. This is all left over from catfishing. Well, I've been doing some catfishing, so I don't like to waste anything. And then you can just get a couple at a go, tap them level like that. I think I might have to go down the hook size. I'm on a, a size 12, quite a wide gate, biggish hook. I might have to go down to a smaller if uh, I'm getting a couple of bumps and bangs and they're not taking properly. So just scissor this up. Then you've got some to throw in there and some for hook bait. But here's the ultimate tip. So you've cut down all your loose feed and hook baits here. Get yourself another bait container, spare one, put some cold water in it and just shoot all those in there. Now the other thing you can do is get this one off with one hand. You can get the meat like this and you can trim off the hard skin. If you leave it in the sun it's going to go hard see on the edge you can trim that off and if you keep that in a bowl of cold water as well um, that cup that won't discolour or crust up or go harder. It's more for small fish, for big fish, it probably doesn't matter quite so much, but I still like to have the fresh meat there. I feel like the uh, smell comes out of it a bit better. So there's a couple of tips for you. you know, keeping your lunch of meat, and of course I can just scoop them up like this, and then just throw them out around the float. If you start getting small fish, let's say rudd, roach, and you want a ground bait uh, on top, you can use these pellets. You can, you can mix them up wet, and damp them, or if you're margin fishing like I am just here, where you're really in close, you can just throw those in loose. Sure, a few of them are going to float, but there's going to be sinkers in there as well. And that might actually keep the small fish active and you swim a bit longer. Well, I've gone to a tiny section of worm. Uh, not scissor, just a real small worm. Uh, and 
a nice rope. Nothing yet on the feeder. So you can see the difference between using the feeder and the float. Nice roach. Look at this. Really nice size roach. I think they do have some winter fishing here for roach. It's very, very good. That's a nice looking fish. What I call a pale colour to it. There we go. Easy enough to get a hook out like this with a little plastic disgorger for kids to get one, get two in fact, they get bright colours. So that's one on uh, lunch of meat and one on worm. This was just a tiny, real tiny bit of worm. I'm going to put uh, a section of worm on because there'll be a bit of juice coming out of that. And hopefully, I mean, maybe I should be on smaller hooks, but just the way it is, I'm going to roll it around the bend of the hook and up towards the eye. So it almost, almost looks like a sort of... I have to say it's been some quite... Uh, not so much twitchy bites, like fiddly bites. I'm all fiddly, messing around with it quite a lot. And I guess sometimes you don't know whether that is actually other fish digging around in the swim that are bumping the line. So I tend, especially with worm, to let it go under and just stay under for a millisecond longer. With it. And the bigger the worm, obviously, let them hang on to it a second or two and then just strike into them. All right, a bit more bait. Well, on the feeder I'm uh, getting absolutely nothing on lunch of me, it's weird. So I'm going to go back to banded pellet on that because I, I'm pretty sure I did have a couple of bangs. They could have been lion bites again. Um, this one I've cast right into the edge of the margin of the island. But of course my bait is before that. So I was figuring that if I cast over there, I might pick a fish up, but if I start getting real bangs, I'll know the fish are this side where my bait is and I can start dropping it short. You get what are called line bites. And if you're striking and missing, you want to come shorter and shorter each time until you actually connect with the fish. Let's go back to the banded pellet. I'm looking around, I haven't seen a fish caught yet. I think I'm winning the roach trophy. So that's what it looks like guys, golf ball feeder and the pellet at the bottom. Let's see if we can't pick the fish off, I'm going to drop it a little bit shorter. I'll just give it one bump, because I don't mind if the pellet's um, resting in amongst the ground bait, it just loosens a few bits of ground bait. And that way the pellet is in amongst the feed. watching that flow people. That's a nice roach. Oh, I guess swing us. Yeah, swing us. That was on that cut down piece of section of worm. Look at these roach. There's some beauties, aren't they? That was on a... Look, that's just the section of worm I was using. Listen, I won't be complaining if I catch you those all afternoon. Well, it's gone pretty dead. Well, not that it's been uh, fireworks, as it were. I think one roach in the corner. Uh, three small fish caught a guy next door. After those three roach, I see nothing on the far bank whatsoever. I put the feeder down under here, put another rest here, right under the bushes, absolutely nothing. I've gone back to the feeder outside, and one or two half-hearted bites. I don't know if it's got a lunch of meat or a worm, to be honest. It's because it is one of those things, I know it's probably the east wind, because it's not just me, it's lots of people just sitting around in the sunshine, basically enjoying the sunshine. But you know what they say about the wind? When the wind blows from the north, the fishes do come forth. When the wind blows from the south, it blows the bait in the fish's mouth. When the wind blows from the west, 
the fishes bite the best, but when the wind blows from the east, the fishes bite the least. How many of us know that is really true? And that is an easterly we've got now for the next three days. I was going to go beach fishing tomorrow, to be honest, I think I'd scrub that. Blue sky, lovely weather, blue sky, but easterly wind, normally the kiss of death. I'm going to hang on for a couple of hours anyway, just to let that sun go around a little bit, you never know. Finally, finally. I've lost about three fish on the feeder, five on the float, just pinging off. I don't know how long this one's going to stay on. The rod folded over, luckily, it's on pellet, and I should, it should be hooked up okay. But they're just feel, feeding really weird, so I'm grateful to get anything out of this. I'm the last person here. Nice, uh, nice mirror carp. Try to get it out. That was right out by the island. But I mean, I'm missing fish on the float inside here. I meet the, the most peculiar bites. Home to Chris and the new net, which uh, somebody was going to dump, throw away. Well, he no wonder he gave me a good fight, people. It's a good one. Let's get him on the mat. It's not going to win Lipstick of the Week competition, but at least it's a carp. At this stage in the proceedings, I'll take anything. Feisty one. I see it's going to go about eight pounds. Let's get it back. And I've got about 20 minutes left. It's been really peculiar this afternoon. They had a match over here, I think he said Monday, today's Wednesday. And on the match late they had, I think it was six weights over, over a hundred pounds. So you can imagine catching a hundred pounds of fish and you don't even get placed in the competition. And yet today they struggled a bit more on the match late. I think 30 something pounds was was, was top weight, so a big, big difference. And just looking at the other anglers around here, there's a lot, a lot of people just sitting gnome-like doing nothing. As I say, I've seen, I think, one, two fish caught, a roach, and I think, guy might have, I don't know if they got bream in it or not, it didn't sound like a carp. But I, I don't understand the way they feed them, because I, I've, I've hit three fish on the feeder, they've all come off. I must have hit five, six fish on the float down here. I get them in, but they just don't load up on the rod. I don't, they, they I want to think they're big roach, but they're probably carp, but it's very, very peculiar feeding. So I'm down to the sort of 10 minute warning. It's a beautiful evening, although it's cold. I think I've got to run it right down. I mean, if I'd have left when everybody else left four or five o'clock, I wouldn't have got that fish. Well, it's not been the greatest day for me. I've lost more than I've landed. But at least, at least I've hooked a few fish. A few tips there, and I think a lot of it is keeping your bait as fresh as you can. I mean, it hasn't done me a lot of good today. What a good job I stayed later to try and pick up the odd bite or two. 
I still can't work out exactly why I'm bumping these fish off. I guess just the way they're feeding. So, don't switch off, because I'm probably going to tag something else on the end of this film and see what else I can do to keep you guys amused. It's a one minute warning. Hi Graham, you look cold again, just for a change, yeah, shivering again, he's always got about 10 layers on, two hats, holding the hat, holding his sleeve, yeah. we're going to have to look oh, after yeah. Yeah. So uh, Graham's asked me if I could talk to you a bit about some of the stuff to keep you warm during fishing. So there are some heaters and stuff you can use in bivvies, I do not suggest you put them in a the bivvy and zip the doors up. You have a door open with a little heater on next to you, make sure nothing can touch it because materials and flames and the heat doesn't go so we're not condoning that you put this in your bivvy fall asleep and wake up warm it's about maybe warm your hands and feet up while you're there and get going so this is a, a portable gas fire a bit like the ones you probably would have seen in the old school offices and that the little bar heater and it works with a propane little gas can like this one that's all that runs it then that one that's all that runs it so i'll show you how it works um, but these ones actually have an automatic cut off so it's got a co2 meter in it so oh, really? it, if, oh, if it was to reach up to its, its levels of carbon dioxide, it would cut off. So this one works like a little flat cooker. And that's almost good for camp. We're talking fishing, but it's, people that's go camping, camping. tenting. That's, so in all, the spring, it's cold. That's it. So all this stuff that we see in fishing around the camping side all comes from camping. So this is just a flat cooker. You pop that one in there. Yeah. It works like the little flat cookers, which I've got one down in the show as well. Okay, so that pulls in there. Right, so this is the way it goes in, and then you pull the lever down, which engages the gas can, okay? So we'll shut that one up there. This dial has to be off for you to engage the gas can, or it will not work. So, and all we do is we literally turn here, and it's got an electric start on it. So we'll let some gas run through to it. Oh, I'll just pull it off. So you can hear the gas going around, probably. Oh, lovely. I feel it. So you've got to let it warm up. Yeah, 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 once yeah, it warmed up, thing. yeah, let the element come off. And does that have a, a low, medium, high? Okay, so on the side there, if you can see. Yeah. So we've got a, a minimum and a maximum. I don't know the exact output of the heat. Um, what have we got on there? Turn to the so, but you've literally, you've got an angle you can tilt up. That. Can you feel the heat? Yeah, absolutely. I might lovely. even switch some of these on the shop to warm us up because it's colder in here than it is outside today. I've been painting all day today in the cold flower. I could have done with that. So you can feel the heat instantly off that, which is brilliant, you know, in that sort of weather. It doesn't look so. hot, guys. Trust me, no. that, is, that is really hot, chucking it out. So, so if you have it, the same thing, if you're out on a low setting, it'll run setting, relative good, run, good time. Yeah, good time. So also another thing that happens in the cold, as we all know, trying to cook with gas, it gets really cold and the gas almost freezes. So the gas that I buy for the tackle shop, generally, if you look, is butane, isobutane and propane. So it's a triple mix gas, which oh, really? means it burns better in the winter. So rather than what I used to do, being a complete wally, was turn the gas can upside down, try and get a bit shake more it all. gas, shake, yeah, it, shake up, it all up. Always to stick it on and get a bit of heat on it. So, but generally having the triple mix gas. Put it in a sleeping bag, Grant. I've done that one. Yeah, put it down upon my feet. Yeah, try and get cold. I mean, look, we're in the shop, ground for how cold those are. Oh, they are, yeah. yeah. Freezing, aren't they? So there's loads of different brands out there. I get Sun Gas, Go Systems. They're all very similar, but what I look for is that triple mix gas. I didn't know that, I must admit. And that makes a difference to you keeping it warm. Look at this, guys. Look, look. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pop this near Graham just to warm him up while we're talking, and he can boast how good Look at these shoes, guys. Look at the trousers. Look, I've been painting, and I even got some on the wall. It's hard to believe, but I actually do. Oh, don't let old wifey see there so I could keep her painting all night long. Right, here's another little tip for you. With these little um, heaters and stuff, you could use them in your little workshops. If you're tying your rigs in your shed, or you're like, I've got a little outhouse where I do my stuff because I'm banished from taking hooks in the house because she's had them on her feet before. So, little workshop. This time it was really chilly in the evenings, early hours of the morning. So, 
those will just raise the temperature and just keep it off you a little bit. Just take the chill off, doesn't it? Yeah. So we've got another version here which you can use as well, which works off a similar system as the, the little cook, the um, heater. You've got what they call a flat cooker. Oh, I think See I've them seen them in most those, shops, yeah. yeah. So. I think you had one on the boat, so it's for the boat guys. That's these. it, a lot of them have them because they're easy to go the, the, and where it's flat, you've got a good basis. It's not stood high up, we're having a conversation ago about having high cookers and things falling over and we all yeah. have that palaver when we're out fishing. So again, it's the same system. Canister. Canister, as you can tell, it's literally the same style valve and everything on there. But what we've got is you can put your gas in there, tab down, Switch it on to click it on, which gives you the same process as that. But I'm not going to unplug that because we want to keep going warm, guys. Yeah, exactly. I'm my boy, don't worry. And this one is a heater as well. So good again for your workshops and things like that. So you switch your, your gas on like you would. You can see it's got locking points. So it's designed to put over your flat. Oh, it goes on this unit. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. an accessory, I've got to call That's it. it. Yeah. So you, you place them over the top, give it yeah. a twist, so now that's pretty solid. And all that basically does is retains heat in these top few plates. You see inside there's another cylinder. Oh, I see, it's one inside the other, guys. Yeah. I'll get as close as I can, but right through there, there's lots of holes fight. in there. Hey, there you, you might be able to see it in there now, all the holes. And I say, the top's pretty much solid with a few vent holes. And the idea is when you switch this, this cooker on, it has a flame come up which reflects the heat and discharges the heat. So it gives you, again, equivalent of like your little bar heater. So that is like your, your plate you're heating up in the middle and that retains the heat and just keeps pumping it out. So again, you have to be very careful because these do get hot. I bet, I bet, yeah. So not to touch, put things on there. They even supply you with a little prong. Oh, I see, yes, yeah, yeah. It's designed just to stick. Obviously, don't place your fingers on there when you do it. But it's just designed to place in there. So and you can it, lift it up. It I've got it, yeah. So, so you wait for it to cool down in any respect. It's let it cool down before you A bit like it. the old pressure lamps in a way, that's don't it. you? know They're going to take similar. 10 minutes to cool off. That's it. So, But that's another nice little thing. And then obviously this one, if you're using this and that, you've got a cooker afterwards. To place exactly, yeah, yeah. So I was going to show you some cooking utensils and bit. I mean, the definite one which is for me is a kettle. I love a cup of tea, I'm sure you do as well, yeah, Graham. Yeah, tea. So we've got a bit of a posh kettle there, which some of you coffee guys will like. And what has it got? No, a it's nice got a camouflage. It's got a there. camouflage handle. And not only that, Graham, we've got, which I always used to have a problem with my own, you've actually got a heat retain loop, so you won't burn your fingers grabbing hold of that. Oh, I see, yeah. Whereas you used to have a metal loop, you pick it up, scald your fingers, yeah, and then that's yeah. it. Yeah, and then go and get a stick. And then we also even got a nice little pattern on there. Oh my god. And what I was saying about retaining plates, so keeping heat, this is a different style kettle. And can you see this rippled vent yes, in here? Yes, inside, yeah. So what it does, when the flame sits under here, it retains the heat. You can boil your kettle in half the time to oh, a really? standard kettle, which so makes it's, it's a not huge dissipating, difference. like if you can imagine the flames going out. It goes outside, outside so that fits straight on there, it goes up through the middle and it comes out here, which heats it much, much faster. And the camouflage handle, the carp can't see that. They'll no. come in closer when you put a brew on with they that. They will come in closer, but the other thing is I'll look good with that one, I Yeah, say. it's cool, it's yeah, cool. Yeah, it's cool. So that's one style, but that's a large kettle if you're gonna be social. Me yeah. being a bit anti-social, I'd have the small kettle. You're on your own, yeah. So this is what we remember as a basic standard camping kettle, which is what we all probably use. Straight bottomed, yeah. which still heat up rather quick because it's only a small amount of water, but that will retain the heat and boil your kettle in half the time. This is like your old school, I've even got a bit of dust on there, because it's a bit older. But these ones yeah. don't even have a lid, which I used to like the whistle lid. Yes, so, got an old so that's one, yeah. just a basic kettle, or another brand do, which is really good. And then the gas for the other cookers we'll go through now, because that's one style of flat cooker and the kettles. I'll show you. So we've got a couple of other styles here. So this is what I call the, the jet burner. It's got three heads in one. Wow. And you can boil stuff extremely fast. But obviously, being able to boil fast means you use more gas. So you will waste a bit more. It depends if you're impatient for your tea or not. Now, I stole both Mike's ones. Yeah. And one is, uh, I think they're cold, both Coleman's, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah I might be wrong. I apologise yeah, if somebody goes, good. they're not Coleman's, Groom. <laughs> Fine, whatever they are, they are. All I know is they're free. I stole them off him, never given back. <laughs> He's got others now. Uh, but I don't like the tall version. You right, know, I, yeah, I like yeah. the sort of low one. It's, it's is that something you find as well? Yeah, I like the lower ones purely. Sorry, I'm having a moment. I can't remember. There we go. 
pull it out slightly and the springs release on this one. So you can see in there it pushes forward and it goes round. It's me with my hands being cold today. Well that heat off that Graham, I, I can know. feel that already. I'm about to combust on my trouser <laughs> leg here. <laughs> right, so you've got that one. And then basically here's a standard thread with all of these cookers now. Yes. It's threaded, which is pretty much a standard. You literally just screw it straight on. I'm not going yeah, to pierce this down, but right, so you screw it on, but what they've got now is that's a self-sealing valve, so when you unscrew, it will seal itself. So you don't have to leave it permanently on. You use it whilst you're fishing, take it off and put it back in its bag. Yeah, so man. this being a lower one, it's got three burners, three points of picking it up, as you can see. Yeah, plenty of plenty of power there. It's not wobbly either. No, which it's is nice and wide. About. It? Whereas I started off with a can like that. Yeah, one, one on screws top. on the top. Exactly. Yeah, and you're up this high and having a litre of boiling hot water that high, more yeah. likely to fall. So that's another one. I'm not going to unbox it because no, I'll no. probably never get it back in the box. So Go Systems. Yeah. Okay. So another, it, yeah. what we call a flat, you know, a, that's, that's a low the one I've used. Low that's one. Yeah. It. So braided hose, threaded top. You had a valve to turn the. the power up and down or power the temperature we want to call it um, but yeah that's, that's just a couple of basic and all universal to your bottles all there all universal so you won't find that the old ones used to be what I called a bayonet fitting it used to push on you yeah. pull a lever and it clip it over generally don't use them that everybody's threaded. supposed to be threaded which yeah. to me is safer it's yeah. more it's more accurate and it stays on there so um, that's it for cooking bits really I mean you can also get things like this if you really want little Christmas gifts and stuff are really cool I did have one from Mike yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's like, it was. that's a titanium cutlery set in black with a little carp logo and stuff on there no camouflage so, handles there no because I <laughs> to be fair for me if I had black or camouflage I would lose you can lose it, it. I know I would lose. so I generally <laughs> I like this thing where Corder and Guru and Drenn and all these fluorescent colours yeah, and scissors you and find it. Like, drop it on the floor, you notice it and pick it up. I've got a bait boat but, but knife that somebody sent me from Scotland and uh, it, I think it was Steve from Fife he said and it's bright orange right, but right, I ain't lost it, yeah, it's still perfect. going. That's what we want. So I've got, I dragged a couple of bits out just to show you Graham was the cut of gloves. So these are by Ice Bear, old school company, been around forever. Yep. These are what they call a titanium foil lining in between. Yes. So you can't see it on there, but they're good for keeping your hands warm and obviously fingerless. Oh, I see, the tops come off them. Yeah, so they come back and they just fold back. So you can pop your fingers there. through the tie through. knots and stuff. Yeah, tie knots or access your scissors. So it's normally That's a good thumb, idea. Four finger. That. Yeah, so they've been around for a long time. So I've got little selection of those. I thought it was always like mittens or gloves and no, that was it. I mean some people prefer thick gloves but when we're fishing yeah. it's a bit keep relatively warm but you want easy access to get to stuff. What well, I find is when I'm beach fishing I'm baiting up with ragworm and squid yeah. you've got to take your gloves off. You yeah. don't always <laughs> wipe your hands you go back inside the glove yeah. and after about four minutes the gloves are rank. Well, the wife I, goes nuts. What they I smell. would say is, is uh, have a pair of sea fishing gloves that you can throw away after a few trips. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I should I do, do, yeah. So. I've also, these are some of our favourite socks we sell in the shop by Ski Tex. Um, they are literally just an over sock. So they're, they're one size, 24 inch tube as they call it. Um, they fit most people's feet, there's no problem with that. And Why do you call it an over sock? Is that an over sock, so I think you could wear it on its own, but I would wear my normal socks every day. Yeah. And if I was going to go fishing tonight and thought, oh, pop me wellies or pop, pop me boots on and it's going to be chilly, I could pull those straight over my socks and put them straight in my boots and it gives me a double layer and I'm really warm with them, you know. So they're nothing too expensive, they're reasonably priced, but a yeah. nice lining in there as well. That's what you want, yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, you can get the merino wool ones, so I'll have to show you those. I've got those coming next week, so they're padded t heel and toe to yes. keep you a bit warmer out. But I find that, with a, in conjunction with a standard pair of socks, is really warm. Right, I've got something else here because I keep laughing at Graham with his painted clothes and he's always looking cold. So this is one of our lines we've been doing this year. So it's not you won't normally see it in fishing at all, but I do a lot of shooting brands and things like that. And this is just a cheap jacket by Champion. This is a fleece lined shirt, guys. And what that is, it's all the way through the sleeves, right down to the cuff. Oh really? I think so that, yeah, yeah. When you wear like a You'd wear probably like Graham's got an ace, got his t-shirt, his shirt, a fleece. That's it, that's it. You could just wear that without the t-shirt underneath and then your fleece and you stay so warm. It doesn't let the wind through. 
it's just really warm. I do various styles of it. Have a look at guys. It's not just the fishing brands. There are other brands out of things like this that keep you very warm. Not just that a pattern or colour. They no, got different I've ones. got different patterns and colours. We've got green with big checks. I mean, yeah. this one's aimed at my like, farmer lads who still go on the shoots and that seem to like them. Sort yeah. of country sort of style clothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is like a gingham sort of pattern. I've got other colours downstairs of all sorts of colours and sizes. I do like the idea of the inside. It's almost like a mini fleece in it a way, is. isn't it? It's lovely. So some of my friends have... Uh, talk them into using them and they're like that's not what i normally wear i'm not wearing that fishing and i'll tell you what they've come back and bought really? some others because they've been that warm as a base layer they've just been lovely well, the problem, problem i had when i've been out wife we're both working outside might be in a garden yeah sometimes fishing like i've got a body warmer on now i won't show you it's covered in paint rips and tears it's my working one but my arms get cold yes that's going to solve the problem i can see that yeah. yeah so you won't get cold arms and it's that thing of the wind as we know when the wind comes through yeah. it cuts through it's even going. so this is a thermal jumper but i find if i go outside now and the wind blows i can feel it on my arms but yeah. if i wear that it really doesn't come through that fleece layer it's really good so yeah stay warm guys get out there and buy some warm clothing from your local tackle shops and uh have a look at some of the other things available. Out. And they can come into you because you're getting new stock in every day no, now, and you run up to Christmas. Day. Yeah, run up to Christmas. We get all sorts of bits in. So we cover all the shooting, the fishing, uh, and just outdoor walking and stuff. So footwear, things like that. So really, it's just get out there, buy the right clothing for the right conditions, and then you'll never be cold when you're out and about. Well, as we just spoke about the gas cans and using all these, a little point I just want to make is quite a big thing these days with fires and things and things like all these charging products. When you're buying any of these products, make sure they're CE regulated, which means if you look there, you see all the different countries that have agreed that that is... Let me zoom in on that there. Can you see it yeah, on see it? Just above so basically, the barcode, yeah. it just tells you that they have confirmed that is a safe product to use in the yeah. environment what it's designed for. Don't get me wrong, you can't use it in the things you shouldn't be doing, but CE branded means it's been tried and tested and accepted for the UK that it is a safe product to sell. And as you'll see, there you go, another CE mark. You know, if you pop in the shop and you want to know anything about it, I can always go through and explain the CE branding a bit better. Yeah. But as I say, on that one as well, and then you see on that little one, there's a little tiny CE Oh, mark. we've got it just here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every yeah. product you've got that's gone tried and tested, so when you see all these companies that are charging a bit more of this, that, and people go, oh, you've got tax on this and that, it's not, they are putting their name to a branded mark yeah. and saying it is safe and it's been quality controlled and checked. So The, the thing is, if you buy anywhere other than the shop at least with a shop you've got a potential of taking it back and, and discussing back. with you know yeah, discussing the problem what the problems a return are or a refund so you know we're quite open in this shop we're not here to rip people off we are here to a service we're a service and as everybody knows a tackle shop's not just a shop it's a yeah. community and we'll have a laugh and it's, it's all good fun and it's, it's worth coming much. in for a cup of tea and see a dog with a pink hairdo it is indeed so yeah oh what's his just, name they're asking her me. name is poppy oh, no, would you I'll like me to get her to come up so you can see her poppy yeah i'll whistle her up especially as i've been calling in good boy yeah. good boy <laughs> poppy. we've been asked people they said what well, i want to know the name of the dog please I know what you guys are like on YouTube. You're looking at all the sketchy stuff in the background. So what's this? What's that? Here comes the most famous dog that I've been saying. Good boy. Yeah, good this boy. This is the famous dog of Fleet. This is Poppy. Everyone loves a dog like Mortimer and White House. Like they've got their little one. And this is our tackle shop dog. So she's looking really sad and a bit, a bit annoyed. I've she doesn't like YouTube. She has all that fame. She's going to get a lovely pink top. Yeah. You don't. You won't see another dog like that. She's uh, when he's up, it looks a bit like a Komodo dragon. <laughs> so, puppy, what's this? You can speak for me. Speak for the camera. Where you go? Can I speak there? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's not a real one. So, Graham, I'm going home. And it's a girl. It's a girl, not a boy. <laughs> Graham, appreciate that. Thank you very much. No I appreciate it. Oh, don't forget, turn that, oh, you turned it off, turn the old cooker. Off. Yeah, we'll let that cool down before we pack it away. There's a, there's a, black, there's a, there's a black fashioning himself in there with yeah. paint up his trousers there, people. Yeah, that's, that's dressing room. That no, that's, that's, that's one of the tramps, I think, is local. I did, I felt sorry for him. I've let him keep him warm.